It's primary day across the country with voters heading to the polls in seven states, including New York, where Michael Grimm is fighting to get his congressional seat back after his prison stint as he runs against Dan Donovan. Joining me now is Meredith Kelly, DCCC Communications Director, and Matt Gorman. He's over at the NRCC, also doing communications as the director. Great to have you both here today. Uh, Matt, let me start with you. Um, in New York, with this Michael Grimm seat against Dan Donovan, does the NRCC you know, have a preferred outcome here? Well, you know, uh, thanks for having me, Dana. First of all, uh, we support Dan Donovan. We have from the beginning. He's run a great campaign so far. He has a record of accomplishment, and we believe he's going to be victorious tonight as well. Uh, but that's also not the only primary we're keeping our eye on tonight in New York. Upstate, in John Fast's district, there's a four-way clown car primary, essentially, among the Democrats, where single pairs become the uh, issue du jour in that race mm. and a litmus test. Uh, and so whoever takes that position of raising taxes by $32 trillion, complete government control of health care, or even abolishing the VA or Medicare Part D as we know it, is going to be rendered unelectable in a general. So there's plenty of primaries to go around tonight, and we're keeping our eye on that one. Well, what are your thoughts, Meredith, on, on that New York 11, but also if you have other ones in New York that you're looking at? Sure. Thanks for having me, Dana. Uh, in New York 11, Max Rose is a combat veteran in the Army and has since gone on to advocate for affordable health care on Staten Island. And he's going to be the Democratic nominee tonight. And he's prepared to run against convict Michael Grimm or the very desperate Dan Donovan, who has spent the last uh, several months running to his right and uh, talking about policies that really hurt New Yorkers. Taking a step back, we are very excited and proud to have more veterans, again, running all across the country from Colorado to upstate New York to that Staten Island seat. And it's a trend you're seeing everywhere. Democrats with records of service who are fighting for more affordable health care, lower prescription drug costs and growing the economy so that wages can actually start keeping up with the cost of living. It's pretty interesting to watch all of that. I'm, of course, I'm, I'm MJ Hager, the one in Texas, I played up some of her uh, ad about the doors opening or being closed on her and her opening them. So, yes, I see that. Let me read to you mm -hmm. something from Chris Starwald, who wrote this yesterday in his halftime report. He said there are almost 60 districts where the Republicans are on defense, so the numbers look pretty grim for the red team. But the secret to Republican effort to save the House may come down to the handful of seats where they are actually playing offense. There are just seven seats currently held by Democrats where Republicans look to have a chance to actually make gains. Given the fact that it looks like, for now, the control of the House will come down to a narrow decision, these seven are taking on special significance for the GOP. And Matt, I think that's a pretty interesting place for the Republicans to be right now. Where you Earlier, like in January, we were talking about this huge blue wave, and now we're actually talking about the possibility of the Republicans being on offense. What's your uh, secret to all of those? Well, we're going to run every single day like we're 10 points down. We've been doing that the entire cycle. Though I will say that the generic ballot has been the closest it's been all cycle. And we're going to run this race on the economy and on the, the effects of tax reform. Both in the short term, we've seen bonuses and perks and increased 401k contributions. Those are the type of things Nancy Pelosi has called crumbs. But also in the longer term as well, we see economic growth at record highs. I just saw a poll yesterday that said two-thirds of Americans feel better about the economy than they have in over 10 years. Unemployment's at record lows, wages are rising. So, you know, I think that's the choice voters are going to have this fall, whether we want to continue the economic progress we've seen or go back to the days of Speaker Pelosi with more economic stagnation and higher taxes. Meredith, I've wanted to ask uh, Democrats about this, and you're one of the best ones to ask, because how are the Democrats going to try to say that it would be better to have Democrats if the economy is still roaring and if the people feel good about the economy? What is the counter-argument from, from the Democrats? I'll give you the last word. Sure. Well, very quickly, Matt mentioned the generic ballot, but I've not seen his committee release any d district specific polling to suggest that they have a single offensive opportunity on the battlefield. When it comes to the tax bill, I think voters every single day learn more about the fact that it is a massive handout to big corporations and billionaires and will increase costs, including health care premiums for everyone else. The more they learn about it, the more unpopular it becomes. We found out today that taxes uh, will go up for synagogues and churches and places of worship, which I don't think mm -hmm. Republicans want to defend. This mm -hmm. bill is getting more unpopular by the day. That's because wages still aren't keeping up with the cost of living right. and middle class people were not prioritized. Well, there you have it. Republicans and Democrats going to the polls today to see who's going to be the nominees in these big contests. Thank you, Meredith Kelly and Matt Gorman. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Dana. Dana. There's a massive